Hi guys, what I have here today is a newly released iFi Zendac. And let me tell you from the start, it's a multi-talented device. Now, let's start with the basics first. In the heart of it, there is a Burr Brown duck chip. Now, iFi didn't really disclose the exact model of the chip, but they call it true native. And uh, with me, that's okay, because I don't really need to know the numbers and engineering stuff as long as they made it sound, sound good. But we'll get to that a little bit later. So, spec sheet is really impressive and basically it supports all that you could ever need or want, including DSD, MQA for those of you who use Tidal Streaming like I am, and uh, all high-res formats and so on. So nothing to worry about that. Now, let's talk about connections. On the digital front, we have only one connection here, USB port. And that's it, no coaxial, no optical input. But the story gets really interesting when we start talking about outputs. So, let's start from the beginning. First of all, there is a pure duck output over RCA connectors here, it's single-ended, but there is also balanced out, this one, that I didn't really test because I uh, personally don't own any balanced amp. And this little switch is for you to choose, do you want fixed line out on your RCAs or do you want it to be affected by volume control? I really like that little detail because that way I can choose to have fixed line out for my amp and I can independently control volume for my headphones. Really nice touch. I really think all DAC amp combos should have something like that. Also, as you can see here, there is additional power input. You don't really need it because Zen DAC is powered by PC USB power. But you might want to think about it. I'll get to that later when I talk about sound quality. So on the front, there are two headphone outputs. One, very typical single-ended, 6.25 millimeters. And the other one is balanced, again, 2.5 millimeters for those of you who have balanced headphones. Now again, I tested it only with single-ended out because I currently don't own any balanced headphones. Okay, so let me power it quickly before we continue to talk about some other functions. As you can see, as I mentioned, USB is enough to power the device. And there you go, you don't need external power supply for it to function. So another thing that I wanted to mention here on the front, you can see two buttons. One is basically low gain and high gain. So it's important because if you have demanding cans, you want it in high gain so you can get more power from it. But if you're using it with sensitive in-ear models, for example, you don't really want the, to your whole volume scale to be somewhere here because it would be too loud. So you go to low gain mode and you can safely use a bigger portion of this volume control, which is also important because if there is any channel imbalance in these first few millimeters, you will not care because you can use this part in low gain mode. Now, while talking about volume control, uh, maybe it's good to mention that it's actually analog and iFi says that's better than any possible digital solution out there. Also, it's very smooth to operate, I like it. And yeah, regarding build quality, I forgot to mention in the beginning, it's actually built really nice and sturdy. As you can maybe see some of that in the pictures, but when you take it out of the box and you feel this solidity, I was immediately like, wow, this thing looks nice and more expensive than it really is. So I really, really liked it. 
Now, let's talk about the most important thing here, and that sound quality. So, first of all, I would like to start talking about line out over RCA connectors. And this story will have three parts. So, please bear with me. Don't just leave the video after you hear my first impression. Because this little thing has few twists and turns that you want to know about, trust me. So, I hooked it up to my typical room setup, Cyrus Amp and Acoustic Energy speakers, and what I got at first was a very fluid sound. I realized there is a deep bass, it's quite warmish, it's pleasant, it's soft, but maybe not as controlled as I would like, not as fast and precise. Now, going upwards, there was very clean and nice mid-range, a little bit recessed and laid-back sound stage that is also pleasant to listen, but that's kind of opposite from your typical upfront aggressive saber type of sound staging. And well-extended highs that are quite bright, but again very fluid, so never actually tiring, never grainy or too sharp or anything. And I was like, yeah, this is a really nice sound. I could live with it. But I wanted to say it's basically a matter of choice. If you want more analytical and precise sound, you can go with something like Shit Modi 3. If you like this sort of soft, warmish, laid-back sound, but again, it has a lot of energy, dynamics, and details, you can go with i5. But there is a first turn. I was browsing through its official web page, and I actually found there is a new firmware for this device. And, very important, this new firmware brings you completely new filter. So, instead of factory default linear phase filter, you get a new so-called GTO filter. And of course, I was curious to find out will that make any change in sound quality. So I quickly downloaded it and flashed it into the device. It took me around one minute or even less to do all of that. And at the end of process, I then will restart itself. And one thing that you'll notice immediately is that this front light that actually used to change from green to yellow and purple, depending on the format high resolution MQA, what you're feeding it with, now becomes yellow and it never changes. That's just an effect of that GTO filter, so you shouldn't be bothered about that, but it's a sign that you did it successfully. And I was really positively struck by the sound quality change. Now, you still get same fluid, relaxed sound, but everything just snapped into focus better. For example, I mentioned warmish but not so precise bass. Boom, it's more precise now. You hear more leading edges, more texture in it. And vocals became cleaner and not as veiled. Also, highs still very well extended, but I get the sense that they have more control and more definition, and uh, they are snappier, more energetic. So, as I was really happy with the sound change, I started comparing it to other ducks that I had at hand, and I realized, wow, now I actually preferred Zen's sound over the likes of Shit Modi 3 or LogGD 10. And it had basically the same level of details, um, clear leading edges, really clear vocals, but even more bass extension, more weight to it. Um, highs are as clear and as pronounced but they're again very fluid and never tiring. And every time I'd listen to something, no matter uh, is that music rich with 
vocals or some other instruments, I would feel that everything sounds a little bit weightier and more realistic on Zen compared to other ducks at similar price point. So at this moment already, I was really happy with its sound. And I'm just wondering why iFi does not load GTO filter from to start with, because it's really great. It made a really positive change. And if I accidentally missed it, I would have to make a follow-up review, because it, it is a game changer in my opinion. It is from, yeah, it's a very nice duck, it's, it's just your choice, do you want more detail, detailed and better controlled duck, or do you want more relaxed, warmish kind of duck? No, with GTO you can have it all. Uh, boat, precision, uh, energy, dynamics, like really, really uh, clean, energetic transitions between notes, and that really nice, fluid, uh, relaxed kind of, of sound in the same package. And that brings me to the second turn. Now, I know that I will lose many of you here, and feel free to just ignore this third part, especially if you're on a really uh, budget type of system. If you're like rocking with headphones that are under 100 bucks, or if you are connecting iFi to a really budget power amp and or budget active speakers, then you probably don't want to listen about this third step. But as I mentioned before, on the back there is an additional power supply jack. And what is it for? If you just connect some typical small wall wart to it, nothing will happen. It's actually to provide your iFi Zen with a cleaner and more stable energy source than PC could ever hope to do. So by chance, I actually have linear power supply and I tried connected, connecting it to it. So I will show you how that works actually. So when I connect linear power supply, you can see that Zen restarts for a moment. And I suppose that's because it's switching from PC power to this newly acquired power. So it's not mixing them, because that would um, defeat the purpose. And now it's completely powered by my high quality linear power supply. I'm mentioning linear because that's what I have, but uh, power, uh, switching power supplies can actually be really good and low, low, low noise too. So it's important to have low noise power supply. Now believe it or not, everything that already sounded great and full and weighty started to sound even more like that. Bass started dig deeper and I actually could feel for example, double pedal, having more physical impact in my stomach after connecting external power supply. And I could feel that uh, sound stage got cleaner, like the background became darker and I could easily spot different instruments on the stage more easily than without external power supply. Now the change is not really huge, and as I mentioned, if you are on a really budget type of setup, it might be really small or maybe not even noticeable. I was testing Zen Duck in my room setup, which is around 2000 bucks rig, and it's really revealing. And in that kind of environment, I could easily notice the difference. I even did a um, short A-B blind test with my friend and my girlfriend. Both of them noticed when I uh, turn on external power supply. They didn't know what I'm doing, but they noticed and they just mentioned sound 
is now more real and sounds more like a live music than before. So yeah, they're not audio files, so that's what they said, but they noticed the difference and everything sounded more live and energetic to them too. Now I want to talk about headphone out a little bit. So I tried it with both my AKG K92s and Tuckstar Pro 82s, as well as with several different in-ear models like Tin Audio, Sanfer, DT6 and so on. And the same sound character that I explained for Lineout goes here too. It's very fluid. Uh, bass is very deep and in general it's very pleasant and listenable experience. Now talking about power, I'm probably not the best person to talk about it because my cans are not really that demanding. So in my case I had all the power I need to drive them properly. Even in low gain mode I could drive my AKGs and Tuck Stars really nicely. In high gain mode I would feel a little bit more kick in the bass and a little bit more energy and it was very nice. Now when uh, putting on some in-ear models I really liked this uh, low high gain switch because you don't really want to use just first few millimeters of volume knob. Uh, you just switch to low gain and you can comfortably um, make fine volume adjustments. Oh yeah, and I actually forgot to mention, there is a true bass option, which is some sort of bass boost, as the name says. It boosts bass and upper bass make things sound warmer, uh, but I don't really, I'm not a fan of these kind of things, so I just leave it off, that's the best more natural sound in my opinion. But to each its own, so try it and see if you like it or not. So to sum it up about Zendak, it has really great build quality, it looks more expensive than it really is. It feels uh, very sturdy and very nicely built. Lots of functionality, like uh, different types of outputs, single-ended balanced ones, a switch to override volume control for your RCA outputs that I really liked. It can be powered from your PC, it can be upgraded with a good low noise power supply, if you are that kind of crazy audiophile. And most importantly, great sound quality. Now, when you get it out of the box, it's just very good. It's kind of very liquid-like fluid, uh, soft sound. It still has a lot of details, but that's its character. If you expect upfront jumping at you sound, you will not get that, at least out of the box. But you shouldn't stop there, because just a minute worth of troubles going to the website, downloading new firma firmware with GTO filter, will bring you much more focused and snappier sound from it. At that moment, with new firmware, uh, Zen Duck is the best duck I've heard in this price range. And if you are a crazy audiophile like I am, and if you want to hook it up to a really nice system that can feel the difference, having some low noise power supply is also the last step you can take and bring its sound quality to, to a level that I really did not expect. And just to put some weight behind those words, let me tell you this. This is a loaned unit sent by iFi to me to make a review. But I like it so much, I like its sound, build quality and everything so much that I don't want to send it back. And uh, at the moment of doing this review, I haven't done that already, but immediately after finishing it, I will write to iFi and ask to buy this unit instead of returning it. And uh, I have a lot of budget ducks in my home currently, but I simply don't want to switch back from Zen to any of them. So there you go. 
it's a really nice product and if you're currently in a search for a good duck amp combo or just good duck for that matter uh, currently I cannot remember that I heard anything better at this price point so give it a thought at least because it's definitely worth it